Okay, it's a uh, unit six, lesson four. Hey guys, welcome back to unit six, caring for individuals and families, lesson four, clothing care. So within this lesson, students will be learning to recognize the elements of design in regards to clothing, recognize that one should be happy and comfortable to wear what they want, and to identify ways to conserve clothing. So, clothes which are well designed look attractive and are practical. Are you developing an understanding of what styles are flattering to your body and personal coloring? Are you able to choose clothes that fit well and allow the freedom of movement for the activities you perform? Are you happy in what you wear? Well, your sense of what is attractive to you has changed as you have matured and as fashion has changed. Sometimes you don't even care about fashion. You just want to wear what makes you comfortable and what makes you happy. So, fashion designers work with the same elements of design as all designers do, whether they're interior decorators, etc. They all use color, line, shape, and texture. And these are all used according to the principles of design, which are balance, proportion, and harmony. There are several ways to choose clothing colors. Do you want warm or cool tones? Do specific colors have a meaning in your life? How about styles? So your clothing tastes develop in your family. You have probably inherited clothing styles by what parents slash caregivers impose on you from a very young age. Or maybe you choose to wear clothes which are easy to maintain. Your family may also determine the types of clothing that you are permitted to wear according to culture or religion. You may also have been influenced by media and your peers to dress a certain way. And fashion is ever changing and so are you. But what matters most is that you wear what you want to wear and what best fits your identity that you decide for yourself. So caring for clothing is accepting responsibility for the care and maintenance of your own clothing. This contributes to your household work, which promotes and increases your independence. This also saves you money on replacements. And it also allows you to have a suitable storage plan because it's best not to throw clothes on the ground without folding them, although it's tempting. It also helps keep their shape and last longer. So you must learn how to do your own laundry. It's best to do laundry at off-peak hours to save money. You should always read care labels on clothes such as delicates, wool, tumble, dry, cool, wash, and always remove lint from the dryer. It can prevent fires. So while you're shopping for clothes, completing wardrobe will probably mean adding some clothes and accessories. It's always good to look for advertisements and sales, and on Instagram, for example, look up different styles which catch your eye. Try shopping in a store so that clothing measurements are accurate rather than online. You should always read the label to know what material the clothes are made from. This is due to ethical reasons such as real wool, real leather, real fur. Are these things truly necessary and ethical to look good? Maybe you prefer that and that's fine. It's also important to read the sizes and the measurements and to always try them on in the fitting rooms. Also, read the fine print about return and exchange policies. Hi everyone, welcome to My Green Closet. So textile recycling is a really important part of a sustainable fashion industry. But unfortunately, only about 15% of textile waste in the US gets donated or recycled. The rest goes to the landfill. And even if it is sent for recycling, not all textiles can be recycled and most are actually downcycled. There are some really cool companies working with textile recycling and I'll show you what that process looks like, but first let's talk about the difference between recycling synthetics and natural fibers. 
The only materials that can be recycled back into their original form, although not indefinitely, are 100% pure synthetics like polyester and nylon, which are basically melted down and remade into fibers. Although it is important to note that a lot of recycled synthetics are not actually made from old clothes, but they're made from things like recycled plastic bottles or recycled fishing nets are really popular for creating nylon. Part of the reason for this is that a lot of fabrics are blends, so they're blended with spandex, cotton, or other materials. Or they might have treatments on them that don't easily allow for chemical recycling. So these blended textiles and natural materials are typically mechanically recycled, which does decrease the quality of the fiber and is why you usually only see about 20 to 30% recycled materials instead of 100%. Although some awesome companies like Mud Jeans, which is one of my favorites, have been working to improve this recycling process and being able to incorporate more and more recycled materials without compromising quality. I recently needed to replace my old pair of Mud Jeans, and Mud Jeans has this really cool circular business model and lease program where they collect the old jeans for recycling to be made into new jeans. I also have some behind the scenes footage of their recycling process, so we can see exactly how that works. So after the jeans are returned, they go to Spain, where first the buttons and zippers are removed. Then the jeans go through multiple shredders, chopping them into finer and finer pieces until they're fibers. The fibers are then carded and turned into roving. During this, it will also be blended with virgin cotton. Then it's spun into threads. The threads are dyed. And woven into fabric. Which is of course then sewn into new jeans. Now, even though recycling textiles isn't perfect and we can't yet have 100% recycled cotton jeans, for example, it's still an incredible way to save resources and cut down on the unbelievable amount of textile waste that's going to the landfills. So three things you can do to have a greener closet are first to make sure that all of your old clothes are being donated. And if they can't be donated, that they're going to textile recycling facilities. Next, choose fabrics that are easier to recycle. So 100% pure fibers are definitely the best for recycling, but mud jeans, for example, can still recycle materials that have about 2% spandex, and generally a little bit of spandex is still okay for mechanical recycling. But things like cotton and polyester blends can be really difficult to recycle, and sometimes can only be turned into things like cleaning rags. So pure fibers are generally the best choice for recycling. Finally, try to buy products made from recycled fibers. This not only lowers the impact of the garment, but it also supports brands who are recycling and often innovating and trying to improve textile recycling technology. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I wanna let you know that next week is Fashion Revolution Week. There are tons of events happening around the world and really amazing ways that you can take part and help spread awareness about conscious fashion. I will have more information about it linked below and be sure to subscribe to my channel because I also have a special video coming out for Fashion Revolution Week. Thank you for watching and thank you so much to those of you supporting me on Patreon. So now I'm going to have